Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself, the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. Dr. Uyapero, do you want to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Dr. Angimaru Repero, postdoctoral research fellow working at Mofi Cancer Center with Dr. Javier Punilla. And our lab is focused mainly on translational research in CLL and no Hodgkin lymphomas. And translational research means research that you take from the basic science and then translate it into clinical outcomes for patients looking at parameters. Yes, and it's what we try to do it. And there's one of the, actually, there's two themes that are united in your research. And I, we're going to be discussing a paper that you presented at the American Society of Hematology just in uh, last December. And the title was Targeting Inflammatory Pathways to Reverse Immunosuppressive Tumor Microenvironments and Chronic Lymphocytic Leukemia. And this touches on a lot of things that are important to CLL patients. First, the tumor and microenvironment, second, the inflammatory process that's involved in CLL, and third, immunosuppressive activities uh, and that CLL is an impressive, immunosuppressive disease. So let's start with what is the tumor microenvironment? What is that? The tumor microenvironment uh, is when the CLL cells accumulate in lymph nodes or in the spleen, they are surrounded by other a type of cell that could be white black cells like lymphocytes could be another type of cell that we call myeloid cell and do cell help the CLL cell to grow and proliferate. So, so we think we can, yeah. So we know research that you've done and research that's been done at Mayo suggested that, you know, that some of the drugs may be helpful, not just by targeting the actual cancer, but it's like the seed in the soil, you know, if you can, yes. if you can attack the soil that the cancer is growing in, that that can help if you can make it inhospitable. So talk about inflammation. And I understand all cancer is inflammatory, but CLL is particularly inflammatory. How, how do we know this? What, what does your research tell us about that? Uh, yes, so in CLL, there is like a paradoxical response regarding the inflammation because we see that a CLL patient has a high rate of inflammatory response. Many patients can have even autoimmune uh, anemia or in general cytopenias. But we also see that uh, in CLL, there is a dysregulated uh, immune response. So what uh, we found, is what we are studying right now in our project is a inflammatory protein called X109. So we think that X109 so, is promoting CLL proliferation. So repeat that again so we get that again. Say that one more time more slowly so we get the name of that. So X109. Uh, X109 okay. is a pro-inflammatory protein. So it could be generating proliferation in the BCLL cell, but also could be modulating the microenvironment. So this protein is, is, is there more of it? Is it upregulated in CLL? Is that what you're saying? Yes, is what you're saying. In, in physiological condition, they found mainly in another type of white black cell called myeloid cells. Okay. But what we found that is in CLL, this protein is upregulated during disease progression. So you did some studies in animal models, looking at this and modifying the levels. Can you walk us through that in a patient-friendly way, what your research found? Yes, uh, we use a, a mouse model for CLL. Those mice uh, developed CLL with aging, similar, pretty similar what happened in humans. And we modified genetically those mice to take out, to downregulate the X109 protein and see how the CLL cells behave without this protein. And what we found was uh, that this cell that doesn't have X109 grow slower. And those mice without this protein survive longer. So this suggests it's very important for that inflammatory pathway. Uh, what, are, what are the implications of this? It, it sounds pretty interesting. Uh, are, are there any, I mean, obviously this is a long way from mice to people, but where are you hoping to go with this research? What does this get you excited about? What, 
what now you've got this one small answer what big questions is this open for you yes actually the big question is if we can target x109 to control cll so there are several x109 inhibitors that have been uh, used in clinical trial for autoimmune diseases uh, for some cancer for cancer like prostate cancer and recently for multiple myeloma so we want a test a those inhibitor in a CLL settings. And we already did some experiment in, in mice and they were very promising. Are any of these approved or are they all in uh, development at this point? Uh, they have been, uh, and there is one that we call <coughs> Taskinimod that have been used in a phase three clinical, actually in two phase three clinical trial for resistant prostate cancer. And there is just one uh, phase one for multiple myeloma, but not anything approved yet. All right. But it looks the results in, in solid tumor in prostate cancer has been uh, good. And actually the toxicity for the drug uh, has been really low. And that sounds good. And is it an IV or an oral drug just out of interest? It's an oral drug. Oh, well, that's so a small molecule then that's nice. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's really cited. So you talked about this paradox in CLL that we have this dysfunctional immune system. So it's overactive. It can cause inflammation, uh, can attack our own red blood cells, our own platelets. It, we get these exaggerated responses to insect bites and things like that. But it's also immune deficient. And that's why we have a higher mortality rate with uh, COVID, with pneumonia. We don't respond as well to vaccines. Is there any evidence and you kind of hinted at this in that controlling that inflammatory environment might help restore uh, or more normalize our immune function? Yes, uh, there is a couple of data that show that uh, when there is more inflammation, there is less uh, immune response in T cell, the, the, the GUC cell, the fighters. One is because uh, CLL is a chronic uh, inflammatory in microenvironment. So it looks like these T cells are in presence of the inflammation for a long time. And in some point they become exhausted. They become tired. They cannot fight anymore because the chronic inflammation. So we think if we can de uh, decrease this inflammation, maybe we can improve the T cells. Um, it's something that we look with the X109 inhibitors and we found that when we treat the mice with inhibitor, we not only decrease the CLL proliferation, but we also saw that the T cell were more activated, more cells that are capable to clear the leukemic lymphocyte. Uh, we also look for another um, immune cell, that are the myelo cell that they are, we call a myelo suppressor cells. And we saw that those cells, after the treatment with pakinimod in that is a inhibitor in mice, the cells are lower. Well, reconstituting the immune system is one of the holy grails in CLL because most of us now, with the excellent therapies we have, don't die directly of our CLL, but we die of complications, and most of those complications are immune dysfunction. We die of pneumonia. Uh, infection is still a leading cause of death, and we die of second cancers, and second cancers occur when you're immunosuppressed. So I'm very excited about this pathway, and it just seems to make sense. It also seems like it would work very synergistically with the drugs that target the, the, uh, the leukemic B cells directly. It seems very exciting to me. Yes, actually, um, we think that Mm, this drug, the X109 inhibitor, first is, is acting in cells in the B cells because uh, we see that X109 promote proliferation in the CL cells. And the effect that we are seeing right now in the microenvironment, uh, we has to do a little more, be more of a study to determine if there is an effect directly in the in the tumor marker environment ah. or is there is depending in the B cell modulation. We see that there is an, uh, an effect in the microenvironment because X109 is so important for the myelot. And there is like many studies in other cancer cells that correlate 
X109 modulation in microenvironment, but we need a little bit more of the studies. And also we want to understand well, which is the mechanism of signaling downstream X109 uh, modulation in CLL, because in that way we can try to combine with BCR inhibitor or BCL2 mimetics to try to find like the best combination for this drug. Well, very exciting. And we know that the uh, one of the problems with some therapies in CLL has been that we have exhausted uh, T cell profiles, CAR Ts don't work as well in us as others. So this is all very exciting. Yes, yes. And also, uh, for example, the, the immuno checkpoint uh, blockers doesn't work really well in CLL because there is like high uh, PD. L1 expression in the B cell and also in the myeloid cell. What we found also in our study is after the use of this inhibitor, PDL1 expression significantly decreased. So it's something that we want to explore more, but we are very excited about those results. Wow, so, so many possibilities. I'm so excited. Uh, any final thoughts or anything that you want to share with patients? Are there clinical trials that patients should know about uh, in CLL that are, are they still a ways off? So for these um, X109 inhibitors, uh, right now it's just preclinical data, but we hope uh, in the future to start uh, some clinical trial uh, in human because it's, that is the final idea to try to translate what we already saw in mice to a uh, yeah, to the clinic, to that human setting. Well, uh, uh, doctor, thank you so much for the research that you, you're doing with your team at Moffitt. I think this is an incredibly important area of research. I, I think it's it's an overlooked area and I'm very excited about you. Thanks and please stay in touch. And if, if there's a new uh, uh, data or if there's a trial that's opening, uh, please uh, let us know so we can get the word out. Uh, thank you so much. Absolutely. I, I will let you know. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, as you say, we are all in this together. <laughs>